Hello, today we will be talking about Potomac Horse Fever, or PHF. It's not a very common thing um, in Indiana, but it is a more discussed in um, the southern states uh, like Kentucky or lower. Um, so I thought it would be interesting to talk about that today in the regards of animal health management uh, to prevent and what are the signs. So what is Potomac Horse Fever? Potomac Horse Fever is an acute enterocolitis that is caused by Neorickettsia reticii. Um, now that is a very long, fancy sentence to say that PHF causes enterocolitis, which is inflammation of the digestive tract. Um, this can cause very similar symptoms to colic. Um, so throughout this uh, presentation, you may see some similarities in that. Now, what is Neorickettsia reticii? Um, Neorickettsia reticii is this little um, bug right here that is infected with um, a gram-negative bacteria. Um, so what basically happens is Neorickettsia reticii is a gram-negative bacteria that infects invertebrates such as nail, snails, insects, uh, close to the waterway. Um, so the big guy that is infected is this one right here. This is a catus fly. Um, what happens is a horses will ingest um, insects infected with the Neorickettsia while grazing near rivers and streams. Um, and then the reason that catus flies are the most common to be infected with Neorickettsia is that their larvae is aquatic. Um, <clears throat> and so the larvae will ingest um the feces of snails and other insects while they're growing and then as they develop they will um they will become naturally infected as adults and as the horses are grazing they will eat those bugs so neorickettsia is this nice little microscopic slide right here um i've also put the the slide down here of uh how it kind of forms and how it eventually gets to the horse so how to know if your horse has PHF? It has a lot of similar symptoms like colic, um, like I said before, but there's a couple others like depression, anorexia, uh, laminitis, which is um, the folding and irritation of the laminae layer of the hoof. That can be very painful. That is a very strong indicator that your uh, horse may have PHF. Um, horses have a higher natural temperature, but if their temperature does get above 102, um, that's when you can start suspecting a fever, um, decreased intestinal sounds due to the enterocolitis, um, moderate diarrhea that can cause discomfort and colic. Um, PHF isn't very common in younger horses. It's more common to affect mid and older horses. Um, and most cases of PHF are milder with the most intense symptom being diarrhea. Now, diarrhea is a very strong indicator that something is wrong in your horse. Horses poop a lot. Horses poop a lot of solids. So if you see your horse having diarrhea, that is almost always a bad sign. So the true test to see um, if your horse has PHF is a cell culture or a PSR, PCR test. Um, cell cultures are the most definitive, but PCR tests are um, the cheapest and quickest. Um, cell cultures of um, and receipt from feces or blood, or the PCR test has detection um, under a cell level. So <clears throat> with the, the colic being one of the symptoms, they do do a lot of erratic rolling and nipping at their belly, um, and that kind of indicates that something's wrong. So how is PHF treated? Um, the early detection of PHF can be treated with oxytetracycline, um, which is just an injection drug um, into the normal intravenous area. Um, but if it's in the later stages, diarrhea, colic is present, um, then NSAIDs with the addition of fluid are also added. Um, and then when it gets to the case of it being a severe case of infection is when prophylactic cryotherapy um, can also be administered. This is a pretty fancy thing, um, especially uh, to help with the laminitis, so the horses are not as in much discomfort. So how to prevent PHF? The <clears throat> largest way or the best way to prevent PHF is um, with a vaccination and also limiting the insect activity around horse feeding areas. So um, 
the vaccination isn't something that your horse would commonly get, um, but you can advocate through your veterinarian um, to get it. It protects about 78% of the time, especially with older horses. That can be very important, especially when there's a lot of waterways and warm areas. Um, and the other big way is minimizing insect activity around feeding horses areas so that's turning off lights at night to limit insect swarms so you always see at night you know those big swarms of insects that you never want to walk through um, those can be close to their feed um, and we don't want them ingesting any of the toxins or bacteria that is potentially in those bugs and then limit grazing close to known infected and recce waterways um, now that can be more difficult to tell you have to do research always keep up to date with your um, veterinarian and also um, the board of animal health in your state um, to make sure that everything is up to date and always keep an eye out for your horse. Now I always want uh, to preface that this is not a true medical um, order for you to do. I am not a medical professional. I'm only discussing this as um, an interesting animal health subject. Um, so always discuss your options with a trusted veterinarian before doing anything drastic. Um, and you live with your horse every day, so make sure you know the right temperament for them. And if anything's out of the ordinary, always talk to your veterinarian. And here are my references. Thanks so much for walking.